Hello everybody, this is Poor Nilsson with Random Art Attack, and today we are in Blender 2.8 looking at how to work with bones. This isn't a full tutorial. This is not a 40 minute tutorial of me talking about how to do every little thing, but rather it's just bullet point after bullet point of all the important things condensed into the shortest tutorial humanly possible. So without further ado, let's jump right in and start talking about how to work with bones inside Blender 2.8. The first thing that we want to do is make sure that we have a root bone and that we can see through the mesh and have names show up. Go ahead and hit Shift A, add armature. And then over here in the panels, there's an armature button. It looks like a guy running. You hit viewport display in front and then click names as well. Go ahead and name this root bone by going to the bone and then typing root. The root bone is going to make it so that we can animate this thing by actually moving the root bone and this will help us use a base root motion as well. So you want this, but you don't want it to deform the mesh. What we're going to do is go ahead and skip to a point in which I'm going to show you how to mirror an armature. I'm skipping ahead to where I have made a new bone. So I just extruded another bone and called it hip and then deleted the in-between so it's still connected to the root. And now we're going to start to add to this hip bone by just hitting E extrude. If you name the first bone tail after the hip, it will name all the other bones after that, like that. Now if you hit N, go up to Options, Mirror X, and you select a, a bone and hit Shift E, it will mirror this. Now if you go up top here, you can click Volume. And if you hold control, it will actually put the bone to the volume that you selected. So you can see right there, it's actually putting it in the middle of those little fins. And then you can just do it the same thing. We're going to go ahead and skip ahead, skip ahead and show you how to skin the mesh. So you have an armature created, but you want to apply it to the mesh. I hate weight paint, so we're going to go ahead and do this automatically. How you do this is you select the mesh first and then the armature, hit control P, with automatic weights. And now if I tab into this, into pose mode, you can see, now there's a few things going weird because the teeth are, are separate, but you can see that it's actually moving about the way I want. If this doesn't work the way you want, you can kind of move more bones. I'm gonna now show you how to just basically apply a certain select amount of bones. So I'm separating these teeth so that they're a different armature, like or not different mesh like that. Go to the armature itself and then select just, so tabbed into the armature, I select the bones, hit control I to inverse and then H to hide. Now if I select the mesh and then the armature, control P, it will only automatically weight the unhidden bones. So it's the unhidden bones. So it's the teeth and those bones that I had unhidden. Now, if I go ahead and go into pose mode, you can see that sure enough, the bones are connected to the bottom teeth like that. Next, I'm going to show you a tip of what to do if the scene starts getting too crowded with too many bones. As you can see, I can't really see what's going on, so what you can do, go ahead and do is change the view type of the bone. So I go ahead and go to the Armature tab, Viewport Display, and then just change this to Stick. It helps you to be able to see as you animate. It's not as good as creating the rig itself, because you can't see the tail from the end, but it's a good way of just making it less cluttered. Next, I'm gonna talk about a tip of how to make sure that you've actually skinned the armature correctly. Take your skinned mesh and then just start to deform it into crazy, crazy different angles to make sure that it's all looking correct. Make sure that it's all looking correct. Now there's gonna be some stretching obviously, but this is a great method to make sure that every bone is doing what you want it to do. So after you've selected the mesh and then select, shift selected the armature and hit control P and parented it, you can start to go into pose mode and just move this thing around to make sure that it's, it's deforming right. So what I'm doing is as I move this, I'm looking at the eye stalks, I'm looking at the shoulder joints, I'm looking at everything to make sure it looks great. We're now gonna talk about IKs and how to create IK movement within your armatures. So what I like to do is I like to think of it as a backwards joint. The IK is going to move and then up to a certain joint, it's gonna pivot around the joint away from it. So I always like to go to a foot or an ankle to create an IK. So here on a leg, I'm gonna go ahead and select this. So I basically extrude a foot leg IK that I named. And now I need to change off the deform. And now I need to change off the deform 
go ahead and select the bone, deform off, good. And then I also need to break the parent. So what I do is I go ahead and go to the relations and turn off parent. Relations, turn off parent. Now to actually add the IK, you have to hit the IK first and then in pose mode, then select the next bone, shift, select, and then shift I. This will add an IK to active bone, good. Now as you move this, it's gonna do some really weird things. So we want to shorten the length of the chain. So down here underneath the bone, it's the add bone constraint, chain length one, two, three. And now where it's pointing to is going to act as a joint. So you can see it always tries to point to the IK, but it moves to where the chain length went to. This is very important as you create IK constraints. IK seem to work the best when you actually have like a knee or seem to work the best when you actually have like a knee or an elbow joint if you're doing arm. So we're gonna go ahead and set that up right now. Select a knee joint and hit extrude. Now this is mirrored, so I'm hitting shift E for extrude. So it mirrors both. And then I do it twice. I delete this middle one here. And so I have a bone basically floating right there. Now what I wanna do is I want to name this IK. So back leg, under, uh, knee IK underscore L. So that's gonna be the left side. I will do the exact same name, but instead of L, you have to do R. That way as you change one, the automatic will Auto, the other one will automatically be updated to correspond with the right one. You want to change to form off on both of these. And then you actually want to parent it to the IK. So as the IK rotates and moves, this will also rotate and move. Otherwise, the knee would always be pointing basically wherever this thing was. Now that I have that, I want to go ahead and go into pose mode. So I have that, I want to go ahead and go into pose mode. Select the IK first, and then the bone that it's going to next. So right there, shift I to active bone. And you can see the chain length is too long. So underneath the bone right there, you go chain length one. Now, as I move the knee, you'll see that the leg actually points to that knee. Now notice the other leg is slowly going up. As I add IKs to everything, it's gonna fix that. Don't worry about that. And that's basically how you add knees or elbows. The last thing we're going to talk about is how to actually get the bone rolls correct on this armature because as you can see the bones are all twisted and gnarly like one's facing up the other's kind of facing towards the camera. Let's go ahead and fix that. So select all the bones and hit shift N. Now you can start to click global X and you can see how it kind of rolls the bones global Y. You can also vary it between global Z and I'm looking at the bones and just trying to get them straight on so none of them are turned at all. None of them are turned at all that just looking straight on or straight down. So for example, those back legs, you can see that they're twisted just a little bit. So control N, let's try, that doesn't work. Let's try local and that looked much better. All right, so that's how you do the bone roll. That's it for the tutorial. Support what we do by giving us a thumbs up and commenting below. Also consider following us on Twitter and also on Patreon. In our next tutorial, hopefully we're gonna to start to talk about how to animate this thing now that it's rigged and skinned. So we'll see you then. Have a great day. Bye.